What do you think is the most popular one? Get to the chopper or Austin? Get to the chopper! <laughs> I am with the one and only Arnold Schwarzenegger, my dad and I's biggest uh, idol growing up, and we're in the kitchen here. We've been having an amazing conversation, talking about stuff we can't share, but let's talk about Total Recall. I have it recommended in my top best books. So Good taste. Good taste? Yes. <laughs> you know, the first thing I would say about the book is, we were just talking about this. What do you think, do you think it was important your upbringing to reprogram your mind? Because in the beginning chapters, you talk about how your dad made you work out before you ate. Well, it was all about you know, being useful. Uh, he also felt that you should earn your breakfast. So he had me go and do push-ups and do sit-ups and knee bends and all kinds of things. Or he would just send me down to the basement to chop wood for half an hour. And then he says, okay, now you can come up and have your stirts which is kind of, I guess, a breakfast dish that they, they serve in Austria, and some, you know, hot chocolate or whatever I had in those days. Uh, and then we went, would go to school. So, I mean, you had to earn your breakfast. I think all of this stays with you for the rest of your life. Because so many people procrastinate you. You don't seem to have a problem with procrastinating. No, I don't procrastinate because I see a very clear vision of certain things, a certain goal, and then I go after it because you snooze, you lose. Right. So to me, there's no such thing as like, you know, I like to take a vacation and I like to go and rest and all those kind of things. But when I'm on a mission and when I go after something, I go after adventures. I mean, there's no stopping. Yeah. Now, number two, three points. So number one, your, your upbringing. Number two, and we talked about this a little earlier. How, what is the secret for somebody watching? Because all throughout the book, you thought bigger than everybody else. When it was bodybuilding, you were saying you didn't just try to become Mr. Austria, you want to be Mr. Olympia. When it came to movies, you didn't just want to be in a movie, you wanted to be the biggest, highest grossing movie star of all time. What can somebody do watching to overcome fear, the fear of thinking big? Most people are just too afraid to think big. Well, the reason why I was never really afraid of thinking big was because, I mean, how far can you fall? I mean, it's six feet down is the ground, so then you get up again if you fall and you can start all over again. So that's number one, so I'm not afraid of failing. Uh, number two, I think in bodybuilding, with the age of 20, I became Mr. Universe. I, I accomplished my goals. I knew that through hard work and the various different rules that I applied to become the world champion and having a very clear vision that I'm gonna be that world champion, just like Reg Park, that was important to me. So when I did that, I realized that you can do this with anything. It takes just as much effort. It doesn't take any more effort. You just have to believe in yourself and you have to believe 100% on your goal. And then it becomes such a pleasure to work to that goal no matter how big the struggle is because you know that every struggle and every effort you put in takes you one step closer accomplishing that goal. That's amazing. Now, number three, my biggest takeaway from the book was reps and sets, repetitions. So many people want to do big things, but they're not willing to put in that repetition, like, you know, obviously lifting weights. But how do you apply repetitions to other things you did, like acting? You talk about things. What, what were some specific techniques? Well, let me just give you an example. I mean, you know, in bodybuilding and in lifting and in sports, you learn about the reps, that the more often you do something, the better you get. So the same is also with the scene. If I study for a scene in a movie, then I do a, a rehearsal, not just three times. I do it 20, 30, 40 times that scene. So when I get to the set, I know the dialogue and I then can move around freely and just be at the character rather than having to worry about the dialogue and the sentence and the way it's structured and all those kind of things. So it's reps. And the same thing is with everything else. Look, in skiing, the more you ski, the better you get in skiing. Uh, the more you play the piano, look at these little girls that you see sometimes on stage, they practice seven hours a day piano. Yeah. I mean, it's reps. It's yeah. reps, reps, reps. That's why I said to people, I said, the key thing is, and one of the rules of success is to work your ass off. Reps, reps, reps. There is no shortcut. Forget about the shortcuts, just work your ass off and then you will accomplish something. It's amazing. Now last bonus little point for somebody watching. You talk about this in the book. Daily routine. It's important that people have a good daily routine. What's a rough outline without getting into everything that you think a routine, and you talk about this in the book, Total Recall, a routine people can emulate that you kind of pioneered? Well, I, I just uh, I have a simple routine. I get up early in the morning. 
uh, I believe what Ted Turner said, early to bed, early to rise, work like hell, and advertise. <laughs> and so this is what I believe in. So I go uh, to bed early, it's around 10 o'clock, then I wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning, uh, which is six hours of sleep, that's all you need. And if you need more, then just sleep a little faster. And then uh, <laughs> I just get going, you know, I mean, then I read. Yeah. Uh, I, I read the newspaper, I read uh, articles, I go on the internet and I read. Uh, and then by the time comes six o'clock, I get on my bike, I ride down to the gym, I work out for an hour, then I ride back again, have my breakfast. So this is a routine just to get the day going before I ever go to the office or before I start some serious work. So it's a routine. An empty, you like the empty, empty stomach workout? Finish? Yeah, because I mean, I, I have enough fat on my body, <laughs> trust me. Uh, you I'm, not one of, I'm not one of those 5% body fat kind of a guys. I'm the 15% body fat kind of a guy. So therefore, I have enough fat that I will survive a one-hour workout and a one-hour <laughs> bike ride. I know that for sure. So far, I've never fallen off the You're bike. I'm never worried about that. Well, you're a mentor to millions of people, and you told me you think mentors is one of the most important things. Well, mentors is extremely important, and we talked earlier about reading books. I mean, it is great to read about great people, about great presidents, about great athletes, about great business leaders and so on, because you can learn and you can emulate and you can shoot for the same kind of goals because you know it has been already done, so therefore why not do it the same thing again? And then maybe go even beyond that. So I think that motivations and having uh, idols, uh, you know, I mean, to me, having like someone like Nelson Mandela, that is a great idol of mine, uh, about forgiveness and about bringing people together. I mean, who is a better teacher than him? Yeah. Or the, the courage of, a, an, a, you know, uh, Gorbachev, for instance, the guy that grew up under communism yeah. and then dismantled communism when he was on the top, yeah. when he was president, because he realized it didn't work. Yeah. How great is that? How much balls does it take to do something like that? So to me, I admire people like that. Or Ronald Reagan, who was a conservative, but he was able to work with Democrats and Republicans in order to get things done. He brought people together. I admire that. So those are the kind of idols that I have. Or oh, yesterday we put to rest uh, Muhammad Ali. So mm -hmm. I was there at the funeral. Wow. He was an idol of mine because he was not only the greatest in the ring, but he was the greatest also with the greatest heart who yeah. was always giving, 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 because he believed that, that we're going to be judged not by how much we make, but by how much we give. So let's give something back. So that's a great lesson for the rest of the world. So these are idols of mine. Yeah, well, you're an idol. I did, I have a TEDx talk. It's one of the top 15, and I named you as the top five mentors. So I appreciate this kitchen talk, and this was amazing. My dad, would have, my dad was a pro bodybuilder. If he knew I was here, my dad would have a heart attack. But. Thank you so much. Absolutely. That was amazing. Thank you. Now go out. I'm telling you this. People know me for having the biggest book club in the world. Top 10 books. Arnold Schwarzenegger wrote a book. It's called Total Recall. It's his autobiography from start to finish. I am not being paid to recommend this book. I am telling you, it is one of the great ones out there. So click the link. I'll put a link straight to Amazon. Please buy it. Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> You and I, we're going to the Rob Report. Yes. We're going to be judges on Never. the car. We're going to be driving Bugattis and Ferraris and Porsches and everything. I'm going to drink wine. <laughs> so your favorite book is? Favorite book of all time, Cervantes, obviously. Why? I would just have his, his, his book is his life. His life is most incredible. Think personally. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh, no. You mean on that phone? Oh, no. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yo, me and Dolph had a side of the showdown like a year ago. You know, How boys get in his mouth? <laughs> you must be sleeping. Ask you one question about books. Yeah. What's the best book you've read in the last year, 10 years? The most instrumental, you think? In the last 10 years? Yeah, How are you? Ever. Ever. You know, I, I, I tell you something. That I have always a difficult time when someone says the best. You know, because someone says it's the best exercise. What is the, your, your favorite movie that you've ever done? I could never come up with one, but I can tell you, I enjoy in general uh, autobiographies. 
Yeah. yeah. I enjoy reading about uh, things that I'm interested in. I'm interested in political leaders, if it's Churchill, if it's Reagan, if it's Clinton, if it's, if it's no matter what the party is. I like to read history, uh, about American history and general history. Um, so, you know, and then I read a lot of scripts. Think big. My mind's still running through all the conversations I had with Arnold Schwarzenegger last night in his kitchen. Talked to him for about an hour. It's one of the greatest conversations I've ever had. And that's one of the takeaways. Think big. You know, he told me, he said he always thought big. He said, don't worry about failure so much, Ty. How far can you really fall? We're all only a few feet from the ground. And I was thinking, mentors. You know, he told me about his mentor, Reg Park, his first mentor. And I thought, that's what's wrong in the world. That's why it's so easy to feel lost. Who do we have guiding our way? You know, you got to go out and you have to find people. You have to find people who have done it before, who can shorten the path, who can keep you from failure. He told me, he said, don't fail too much. One of the reasons he doesn't procrastinate and can think big, he said, is because he, uh, he at 20 years old won Mr. Olympia. So he said he got used to success and he tasted success. And so, you know, make sure you find some little wins in life. Don't always lose. It's a myth that you only want to learn from mistakes. Well, you learn from mistakes. They don't have to be yours, though. And you can also learn from wins. You know, Arnold learned from his wins. There's my dad. I told him, I said, my dad was a pro bodybuilder. My dad would love that I'm in here talking with you, Arnold. There's Arnold. Seven-time Mr. Olympia. Multi-millionaire before he was 30 in real estate. Two-time California governor, not a man without flaws. We all have flaws. I always think of that saying, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. But what he's achieved is something you and I can learn from, you know? And, and so much of life becomes nitpicking and you bring up people's names and people go, oh, well, he's not perfect there. He's not perfect there. I'm like, yeah, but have some respect. Have some respect for somebody who did stuff. Saw he's a philanthropist, you know, and he genuinely cares. Took the time out to talk to me, didn't have to talk to me. I wasn't paying him to talk, you know. He told me, he said, Ty, he likes to work out uh, on an empty stomach. I said, why? He said, because he always figured he had a little bit too much fat. So I'm in here in the gym, you know, follow his, uh, his level. He said he didn't procrastinate. He learned from his father the value of, of not just being lazy, always having something to do. He says he likes to wake up, he likes to read a lot, gets up, he gets active, always doing something, you know? Keep yourself, I wouldn't say entertained, it's important to sit back and think. And he told me he likes to do that early in the morning. People in the modern world, with all this convenience we have, the next thing you know all you're doing is just sitting around not accomplishing anything. You know, go out, conquer the world, conquer your fears, think big. That's all I could think. You know, he's a big dude, strong, but his life was big. Made some mistakes, made a lot of great <laughs> uh, attempts and successes. Yeah, I'm gonna post the full talk we did here soon, but just thought I would post that while I was walking in here, get a little weights going. Whenever I learn something from a mentor, I try to immediately put it in practice. Even if I won't do it exactly like, you know, perfectly, obviously, people are different. But try to become an action taker. You hear something, you read a book, do it. Try it. Arnold Schwarzenegger tells me he likes to work out before he eats breakfast. Hey, can't get a better piece of advice from, from a, uh, you know man who achieved, like I said, seven time Mr. Olympia. So, who's your mentor? How big you thinking? How much do you fear falling? Watch from my video. I'm gonna post the full talk, most of it. Some of it's private, but post a good, good bit of it. All right. Oh, by the way, leave me a comment. Comment on something you've been putting off that you know you should do. Some area you're not thinking big that you know you can think big in now.